to prove that you you know have you know the, the, the stability and solidity of gold in uh, in your in your finances. And you know the central banker said, no, that would be the last thing we'd want to do. We yeah. need yeah. currencies to defend our currency. Now let's look at the uh, data that you've presented here, and uh, let's just run through a quick summary. Net changes in gold reserves in 2021 year end uh, year to date 2021 and year end 2020. You've got the biggest increases in reserves from Thailand, Hungary, Brazil. Everything on the left hand side of the screen. On the right hand side, you've got the biggest sellers of of gold: Turkey, Philippines, Russia, Germany. And, uh, and, you know, interestingly, I've noticed some of the biggest buyers of gold in 2019, including China, are not on either of these lists because China has not changed its gold reserves last year. So just on first glance, uh, what can you tell us about this data here and uh, sort of the shifts in global, global reserves of gold that we've seen in the last year or so? Let me start with one very important fact. These are monetary reserves of gold. Other gov various governments have strategic reserves and, and, and reserves that are not owned by the central bank, or they might have gold investments and in their sovereign wealth fund. These are monetary reserves of gold. And what we're seeing this year in the first half of this year, the first seven months, is more central banks are buying more gold at higher prices uh, than they have in the past. So the price sensitivity that we've seen in central banks toward gold, with the exception of China, which we'll get to, uh, is gone, you know. And, and if you look at, you know, traditionally over the last several, uh, 13 years or so, central banks are more price sensitive. So when the price rises, they pull back. But what we've seen is a number of central banks like Thailand and Hungary, they have domestic political issues. Hungary has uh, international political issues. They're under some problems. And so they're converting some of their foreign currency into gold. Thailand has domestic uh, uh, political issues and they're converting some of their, their money into gold. The, the rest of the list of buyers is very interesting because it's spread around the world. And you have country, countries like Mongolia and Cambodia, but you have Egypt and Africa, you have Brazil and Colombia in Latin America, you have Serbia, Czech Republic and Hungary in, in, in Europe, and you have Australia. Uh, so you have a diverse group of central banks that have not been gold buyers for decades, stepping up and buying large amounts of gold. And very importantly, they've been buying at prices like 1780 to 1840. So, you know, the message that we've been giving our clients is, Central banks think $1,800 is a low price or a good price at which to buy on a long-term basis. Yeah, but you made the point that some of these countries like Thailand, Hungary, you've noted, they're buying it because they have political turmoil. So maybe they don't have a choice. It's not like they're bargain hunting right now. They just need to convert, right? No, they don't need to convert. And in fact, you know, it, it's fun. Years ago, I, I mean, you know, 20. 30 years ago, Ireland was having some financial issues and someone from the gold industry went out to a press conference that the Irish Central Bank was having and said, you know, you should buy gold with your few remaining foreign exchange reserves to prove that you, you know, have, you know, the, the, the stability and solidity of gold in, uh, in, your, in your finances. And, you know, the central banker said, no, that would be the last thing we'd want to do. We yeah. need yeah. currencies to defend our currency. And, and a lot of people would look at us putting what few currencies uh, reserves we have left into gold as being counterproductive. So, you know, I don't think that the political turmoil forces them to buy gold, but it stimulates an interest in diversifying their portfolio of monetary reserves away from currencies uh, to have more gold in there. And none of these countries, I don't think, are really pretty particularly large portions of their monetary reserves into gold. Uh, you know, they're, they're, most of them have very low amounts of gold in their monetary reserves, and they're, they're just building some exposure to gold. The same way private sector investors and corporations and, and investment funds have been increasing their exposure or building for the first time uh, exposure to gold. 
Let's back up a minute and just talk about, generally speaking, why central banks around the world need to change their gold reserves, either selling or buying. I know that's, you know, yeah. it varies on a case by case basis, but maybe you can help us outline some of the general motives. Yeah. I mean, most central banks fall into one sort of category, and yeah, there are permutations from country to country, but it's pretty much the same. Russia and Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan are sort of outliers in that Russia is facing a lot of sanctions. Uh, it has a lot of hostility geared toward it, uh, especially from the United States government, but also to some extent from the Japanese and European governments. Uh, and Russia has a a cultural issue which is reflected in government policy that they feel that the rest of the world hates them and they're always feeling sort of a state of siege there. So Russia is actually the one country that's an outlier that has been buying a lot of gold uh, from its foreign exchange reserves. When the oil price fell in April of 2020, they stopped buying because they needed the cash to run the government. Now the and and that's why they sold more gold uh, in early 2021 because of that. Now the oil price has risen up, although it's off ten dollars, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the oil price is over sixty five dollars, uh, so it uh, or sixty dollars, <laughs> it's going down fast. Uh, so they they're in better position financially. Uh, so they haven't been selling recently. Other central banks look at it, and and you use the wrong. They don't feel that they need to buy gold. They feel that they want to buy gold. Uh, they want to diversify their monetary reserves. Uh, most of them, and you know, we haven't talked about Turkey. We haven't talked about China. Uh, those are interesting uh, developments there. Uh, but most of these countries don't necessarily see gold as being integral in monetary policy other than as a monetary reserve. And they're diversifying their portfolio. Yes. And they're diversifying their portfolio because, A, a lot of them were bearish on the dollar and have gotten it wrong. The dollar hasn't fallen nearly as much as some people thought it would. Uh, but the volatility in currency uh, markets has increased. So the central bankers simply say it probably makes sense to have some portion of our reserves, a small portion of our reserves, or as the Chinese government said in 2015, a small but significant portion of our reserves in gold just to diversify our portfolio. Yeah. Again, same way that private sector investors and sovereign wealth funds and, and, and corporations do. You brought up a key point, which is volatility in foreign currencies. So let's take a look at this chart one more time. I'm surprised to not see countries like Venezuela and Lebanon on the left-hand side of this uh, screen on the, as, as, the, uh, as high net buyers of gold, given how much their currencies have depreciated due to hyperinflation. Are you surprised at that as well? What was the second country? I'm sorry. Venezuela and Lebanon. Okay. Well, yeah, it's funny because both of them used to have a lot of gold. Yeah. And both of them have sold a lot of gold. Uh, you know, Lebanon in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, uh, Lebanon prior to 1973, was, 74, was like the gold center of the Middle East. Uh, but political instability uh, ended that. And they've sold, they had like 21 million ounces of gold reserves back in the 70s. They've sold most of it off over the years just to survive. Venezuela is the same thing. They had a lot of gold. They sold a bunch. They brought it back. Then they had to try to lease it out. Then they couldn't do that. So they, there was a bunch of gold that seems to have disappeared from the monetary reserves of the government and gone into the monetary reserves of some of the socialist leaders of, of Venezuela, which then showed up in Uganda trying to be re-refined and pawned off as, as artisanal gold production from various African countries. So Venezuela doesn't have a lot of gold. I mean, they tried to use their gold and uh, they did for a little while, but they pretty much used it all up 